Palisade Radio is brought to you by First Majestic Silver Corp., one of the world's purest and fastest growing silver mining companies. Welcome back to another episode of Palisade Radio. This is your host, Colin Cattell. And on the line with us today is returning guest Jordan Roy Byrne. He's the publisher of The Daily Gold, which can be found at thedailygold.com. Jordan, welcome back to the program. Colin, thanks for having me. Yeah, and uh, just for any of our listeners that don't know, uh, you put up a a weekly or sometimes every other week uh, update with technical charts and and fundamental approach to what the market's doing, uh, particularly the gold stocks and the junior sector that goes out through the Palisade Radio YouTube page. You put out a really great update yesterday. We're recording this on Thursday, April 21st, and you talked about the state of the market right now. Uh, look, it, it it seems pretty obvious we're in a new trend. The bull market has started, yet a lot of people are calling for a major correction and money is waiting on the sidelines to jump in. And week after week passes and uh, it's it's seeming seeming to be a worse and worse decision to, to sit on the sideline. Jordan, what do you think is going on in the market right now? Well, Colin, I think what we're seeing in particular with the miners, because let's distinguish between the miners and the metals, because the miners have shown fantastic relative strength. And typically that's what you see at the beginning of a new bull market is the most of the outperformance uh, that you get from the miners versus the metals. I mean, that happens very quickly. It happens immediately after the bottom. It happens very early in a new bull market. I mean, when we're two or three years down the road, uh, the performance of the metals and the shares will be more in line. Of course, that will force guys like you and me and other investors to you know find the stocks that are going to outperform but now everything's outperforming that you know it doesn't matter as long as it has gold or silver in its name and that's just because at the bottom and this was similar to the the share bottom in late 2000 if, if you look at the value of uh, the miners against the metals and specifically gold stocks against gold I mean that was the lowest in basically 90 years so, I mean, a lot of people are showing these Huey Gold charts, XAU Gold, and, you know, we're the cheapest in five years or 10 years or 15 years. But, uh, you know, you know that I have the data that I have, and I look back decades. And look, Colin, this was the worst bear market in 90 years. The price of the gold stocks, relative to gold itself and relative to the stock market, were the lowest they had ever been in at least 90 years. I mean, we're talking back to the 1920s. Uh, so, I mean, that... And again, the bear market was the the you know four and a half years in the stocks, the worst ever in terms of price. And Colin, what happens after you have a really bad bear market is once you get the turn, uh, that that new bull market it tends to just go up for about a year without any real major correction along the way. I mean, you can have it at the beginning if the the market is kind of building a base and and then that base lasts for a while and then it breaks out, but. Um, you know, some examples of this are in other sectors. Look at tech stocks after 2002. I mean, remember, they were down, what, 85%? I mean, the NASDAQ, something like that. And then after uh, that bottom in late 2002, the tech stocks were, I mean, they were just doubling and tripling. And, and I mean, they were so extremely oversold and they just kept going up. And I remember e- even in 2003, the entire market then was going up and everybody was waiting for this big correction and it never really happened. Uh, and, and so another example of that uh, is the stock market in 2009. I mean, we basically had – look, that was the worst bear market in stocks probably since uh, – you'd have to go back to the 37, 38 bear, the 37 to 42 bear, however you want to call it, or maybe even back to the 29 to 32 bear. So after – I mean, after that bear, Colin, uh, I remember – uh, even in early March, I mean, it was going up and there were people who were saying, oh, the economy still stinks. You know, there's still lots of problems. Uh, but but it just kept going up and it kept going up. And, the, and we're seeing that in the gold stocks now. And the reason for that, Colin, is there's just no sellers. The sellers are completely gone. And there's only a few buyers, only the people who bought in around, before the bottom or around the bottom. Those people, once they see the turn, they have huge profits and they're just going to hold on to their positions. And so... Those are the uh, that explains why these markets you have a, a huge you know have a huge rebound and, and people are you know some people of course the real naysayers are saying no we're still in a bear market then there's other people who are bullish but they're saying it's gone up too much I'm waiting for a correction but if you wait for a correction 
Uh, I, I mean that you're just you're taking a big risk there. And and the other thing, Colin, is the corrections that we get. They tend to be very short and quick. And so if you look at GDX, for example, I mean we've had three or four ten percent corrections. We haven't even had a twenty percent correction yet. That may happen at some point soon. But um, you know everybody who's been waiting for a big correction has not. It has not materialized. I mean, the market's gone down, like I said, three or four times 10%, and it looked like it was going to go down 15% or more, and then the next couple of days, boom, it was back up to, to where it was uh, at, at the previous high. So I, I know that was a very long answer, but I think that explains what we're seeing now, particularly in the stocks. Now, the metals, of course, we see silver breaking out. I mean, that's healthy. Uh, and the outperformance in the shares. I mean, I don't know how anyone could be bearish on the sector when the shares are outperforming like this, the shares lead the metals, and in silver breaking out, that's also a very healthy sign. I mean, if we were going to see a big move down, you would see silver showing weakness. You'd see the stocks rolling over and showing weakness. The stocks perhaps might be making a little bit of a short-term top here. Uh, I wouldn't rule that out. But uh, you know, and, and getting back to gold, which has struggled a little bit, it reminds me of what happened. After the, uh, the 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 bottom, when the shares bottomed in late 2000, then gold bottomed in 2001, it really took a while for gold to really confirm its bottom. I mean, there are people who are saying gold needs to take out the 2014 high at 1308, the 2015 high at 1308 to confirm its bottom. And while that's true, I mean, the the stocks could be up another 50 percent before that happens. And if you go back to t and you look at what happened in 2000, 2001, 2002. Gold really didn't confirm its bull market until the middle of 2002 or, or even even late 2002. And, and Colin, the, the miners had already, I mean, they had already gone, the Huey had already gone from 35 to 150. I mean, it had already gone up fourfold by that point in time. So the moral of the story is keep your eye on the stocks. They're going to they're gonna lead. They were completely devastated. And, uh, you know, if, if we get a little correction, take advantage of that. Jordan, logic would dictate that if the underlying metal, for example, gold's going up, that gold stocks would go up. But we always hear about the fact that um, the mining stocks leading is a great indicator. Uh, how does you know how does gold actually have any relation to the gold stocks moving up? The gold stocks are, are going right now, uh, but why is that to say that that gold's not going to correct all of a sudden? Why are you so confident? Well, it's a very good question, but. I mean, just the action we see in silver and the stocks, it's telling you that the bottom is in for the sector. And even if you look at the stocks and you look at the 80-week moving average and you just look at a five- or seven-year chart of GDX and GDXJ, it's clear that we've seen a major turn. And it's just, Colin, even the days when gold has been weak, the miners have held up well. And so if there really was this risk, that gold was going to go below 1190 or, I mean, 1180. That's kind of uh, the support we need to focus on if it's going to correct a little bit more. Um, if that was really going to happen and gold was going to go below that level, I mean, you would see the miners selling off. And remember, these markets are about buyers and sellers. And, I mean, what we're seeing in the stocks. I mean, markets are not mechanical. There's, there's buyers and sellers, and sometimes in, in these things, so it, it, you know, I know there's a lot of people who have their cycles or they have their computers and they, you know, try and predict how everything's going to go, but markets are not mechanical like that. I mean, you can build great systems, but you can't always call a top or a bottom. It, it, it's extremely difficult. And, and uh, but my point is, it's just the strength in the stocks. I mean, it's, it's telling you that all the sellers are out of the market and the buyers are now in control. And the same thing is going on in the metals. It's just to a lesser degree, you could say, because they're not quite as oversold. And we're even seeing this with the commitment of traders where, you know, a lot of people are looking at this and they're saying it's bearish. And, you know, the, the commitment of traders in the high speculative positions in gold, that is one reason why I've been lukewarm on gold recently and why I've said it's probably going to be range bound, but I do think it's going to break out, uh, is because the, the speculators in the market now, I mean, they, they're, they're not selling. I mean, the speculators during the bear market, every time gold would go down a little bit, they'd get scared and they'd sell everything. Gold would go down a lot more. We're not seeing that now. We're see, yeah, we're seeing speculators in both gold and silver, but they're patient and they're holding because they know it's going to go up. 
and you know pro probably because some of them already have profits and, and when you have a profit you tend to hold so maybe that wasn't a direct answer to your question but that that's how i see it well, Jordan, we're certainly in a pretty set trend right now. You're convinced, I'm quite convinced that this bull market is real. But let's talk about what could potentially derail the bull market. Something on the minds of a lot of gold bugs and investors is the U.S. equities. We saw in 2008 that when things crashed uh, in the U.S. stock market, you, of course, had a huge pullback in the gold stocks. It might have been different that time. Uh, at that time uh, because the gold stocks were, were also at highs instead of uh, all-time lows as they are now. Are you concerned at all if we do get a major pullback in U.S. equities that it could once again drag the gold stocks down? Not really. I mean, I, it, just because of what you pointed out, the long-term trend. I mean, the, the stock market is, um, even though it looks healthy to me in the short term, I know a lot of people disagree with that, but the, the breadth looks pretty good. And so, you know, maybe the, maybe the, the, maybe we're not going to have a, a bear market here. Uh, may, maybe it might take another year for the market to really start breaking down again. If you go back to the 99 to 2001 period and you exclude tech stocks, the market was kind of in a similar topping pattern where it really took a, a while for it to break down. Again, I'm excluding tech stocks from that. Uh, and if you look at the stock market and you take energy out of the stock market, um, it, it, it would have been in a much healthier position over the last year, year or two. But uh, anyway, you know, looking at the ratios of gold against the stock market, they had uh, a key breakout in January and then into February, and those have been correcting. But you know, I like to use the 80-week moving average, which really sets the trend. And looking at gold against the S&P, it's still holding above that moving average. And uh, I mean, as long as that holds, um, I'm not going to get too worried about the stock market either it going up too much or breaking down. But I mean, it is. I mean, it is possible if the stock market uh, corrects, it is possible that gold stocks would correct with it, but I don't think you'd see anything too serious. Uh, no, no big moves to worry about uh, beyond the short term. Um, the, the real key for gold is negative real rates, which we've talked about many times. And, and that's why we're in a new bull market, because real rates, remember, from 2011 to 2015, no matter if you look at the real Fed funds rate or the real yield on the five-year treasury bond, real interest rates there, they were negative and then they went back to around zero. So that was negative for precious metals. But since 2015, we've seen inflation start to pick up and uh, bond yields have continued to go down. Uh, the, the, the Fed funds rate has gone up a little bit because they raised rates once. But um, regardless, uh, real, uh, real interest rates over the last year or so, they've gone. They're, they're going down, and they've gone into negative territory again. And unless that completely reverses course, and the Fed is su suddenly going to get aggressive, then uh, I, I don't see this new bull market being derailed. And Colin, there's just too much debt out there for real interest rates to be rising or positive. And, and that's, I mean, that's why gold's in a secular bull market, and that's going what's going to drive it here. Uh, in the quarters and years to come. It's always fun to speculate at the beginning of a bull market just how long it can last. It's also important, of course, to get an idea of, of when's a good exit point. We were talking the other day. I'm not sure if you've had a chance to confirm the research, but uh, I, I know that looking at the past bull and bear markets of gold mining stocks, the gold equities, that generally speaking, I think all but one case in the last 60 or 70 years, the bear market that precedes a bull market is always shorter, meaning if we've just gone through a five-year bear market in gold stocks, we can expect for the bull market that just started three months ago to last at least five years, more likely somewhere between six, seven, or maybe even eight years. Jordan, can you talk about this a bit? Yeah, Colin, you brought that point to my attention, and that's really a fantastic point that you made that I'm, I'm really going to look into that. And I'm also going to kind of compare that with the stock market, because as you were asking that question, I was thinking – of uh, you know, 1929 to 1932, that was probably the worst bear market ever in stocks, and then they had a really strong five-year bull market. But Colin, if you look at the 1937 to 1942 period in stocks, I mean, some some people look at that as two small bear markets or one big bear market. But 
what happened after that, Colin, was the stock market from 1942 to like 1956, I mean, the corrections were very limited. They were very small. So that was really the best, one of the best buying opportunities ever in stocks was 1942. And you really, I mean, I don't have the chart in front of me, but just look at what happened from 1942 to 1956. I mean, from 46 to 49, the market went down about 28% in sideways. Uh, and then after that, I mean, it had a really strong move, I think, into 1956 with really limited drawdowns. So what we're talking about here is the 37 to 42 bear. You know, that if you're looking at the, a five-year performance of the stock market, if, if this is something I'm going to look at myself. If you look at a chart, look at the five-year rolling performance. In 1942, that might be the worst, uh, you know, over the last 100 years. I'm just guessing. I mean, I could be wrong. Uh but if if you look at that, then if that's the case, there's then there's no coincidence why you had a 14 year run after that. I mean, two really strong moves with only uh, a 28 uh, percent mini bull market there in the late 40s in between that. So I mean, so what, what I'm getting at is I just don't I just don't think that applies only to gold stocks. That may apply to other sectors. I mean. One one thing uh, I know I'm getting a little off topic here, but I remember reading somewhere that the coal industry actually went down six years around the Great Depression, and then after that, it had a fantastic boom for, I mean, I, I think like 16 or 18 years. But I mean, that's something I'm going to have to dig up again. But you know, coming back to the present, where we are with the gold stocks, I mean, I, this is a very significant bottom, and I see gold stocks performing extremely well not only over the next three four five years but i mean returns over the next seven eight ten years are probably going to be pretty good now this this cycle and and you know when is this bull market going to end exactly i mean look look looking at some things in my book and some cycles i think i've kind of talked about 2020 to 2021 for gold uh does that mean i'm going to hold the things that i have for another uh, five, six years, not necessarily, but I guess what I'm getting at here is we're in the very early stages of what's going to be an excellent bull market over at least the next couple years and at minimum five years. And if we do get a, a downturn at some point, um, you know, w whether it comes in the fifth or sixth year, I mean, I think gold stocks would perform well after that. I mean, another point to mention, Colin, is, I mean, we we had the 2007 to 2008 bear market in, in, in this sector, and then you had 2011 to 2015. So you had two really bad bear markets, basically in what, like a eight or nine year period. So, I mean, that's that's setting the stage, not just for a really strong four or five years, but um, you know, probably a strong seven to 10 years. But I mean, look, when things get really overbought three, four, five years into the future, I mean, you, you do have to be careful because you can't hold gold stocks forever. I mean, we've even seen that over the last 10 years where these stocks even get killed uh, from cycle to cycle. Jordan, you made a profound statement in your piece on Wednesday that you released, and you said the biggest risk for a gold investor is to not be invested right now. And we've talked about that at the beginning of this interview, but I'm going to leave you with that statement and any other points that you want to make before we end the conversation today. I think it's very important for people to consider where we are in the market, where we might be, and how they need to set themselves up for the next several years. Well, I mean, that that depends on, um, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're buying, you know, whether you're buying the stocks or, or, or the physical metals, I think with the physical metals, you know, they're probably, especially silver, they're probably a better buy here just as far as lower risk. And with the metals, I think it's wise to just accumulate every month. I mean, that's, that's the uh, accumulate every month. That, that's a wise thing to do. Uh, you, you're going to build up a huge position over time and you're going to reap huge rewards. Now, with respect to the stocks, um, a couple things I do want to mention is um, they kind of look like they might be putting in a short-term top here, but I could be wrong. And looking at uh, GDX and GDXJ, 
if they don't have like a 20% or a 15% correction here in the next couple of weeks, Colin, then they may continue and uh, shoot up and test the 2014 highs, which for GDX, so GDX is trading at 23 right now. The, the, the upside target I do have is around 28. And so if GDX zooms up to 28 in the next couple of weeks um, or, or the next month without having a big setback, then you could get a big correction at that point where you could see the 28, it could come back down to 20 or 21. So I, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to say there's not some risk. So if, if the miners do not correct that much here and zoom a lot higher in the next month or so, or the next couple of weeks, um, that would probably lead to a correction at the beginning of the summer. You, you would pro- and that would, that would give you a really good buying opportunity for those who are still on the sidelines. Uh, but just watch carefully because if we do get you know a 15 or 20 percent correction in the next couple of weeks, I think that would set up a really good buying opportunity. I mean, from where they are, from where the miners are here and now, um, I don't I don't see a whole lot of downside risk outside of a, a quick 15 to 20 percent decline. But I don't think that's going to happen. Um, I, I think it's more likely that maybe we get a little correction here and then we move a lot higher after that. And if that's the case, and, and we're looking fairly overbought um, into June or, or middle or late May, then that could be the point where miners are at risk of correcting 20 to 25 percent. And then that would be um, that would be the time for people who are on the sidelines to really get in. But I mean, o- other than those reasons, I mean, if you're waiting for some 40 or 50 percent correction here right now, th- that's just not going to be the case. I mean, the people who own the stocks right now, Colin, are people like you and me are and, and our your followers and my subscribers and you know for the most part we're not going to be selling anything. I mean Colin if your stocks go down 15 20 25% here are you going to be selling? No, absolutely not. I mean a- after such declines it's uh, it doesn't seem like that big of a drop. Absolutely. And, I, and I'm not going to be selling either. And so that I mean that's the point. So I mean if, if people think we're going to have this massive huge correction here and now um, I just I, I see no indication that that's going to happen. I mean, the the worst case scenario would be a test of the 80 week moving average in GDX, which is just below 18. GDX is at 23.25 today. So I I know that was kind of a roundabout answer, but uh, uh, that's kind of how I feel. I mean, we are fairly overbought here, Colin. So if we get even more overbought, then you probably want to relax and wait for some weakness in the summer. But if we get, you know, 10% weakness here in the next couple weeks, then you want to jump on that. All right. Well, Jordan, bullish words from a wise analyst. Thank you for coming back on the program. Of course, thank you for putting out those weekly updates. All of our listeners uh, seem to enjoy those and get a a great deal of information out of that. Jordan's work can be found at thedailygold.com. He does have uh, some free content he puts out, which is very helpful. And then, of course, the uh, premium content where he suggests specific stocks. And uh, he's just been, been doing a great job with his uh, returns on his model portfolio. Jordan, thank you so much for coming back on the program. Colin, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. think you understand the junior mining sector and you think that the participants in the mining sector, junior mining sector, are good people and kind people, hit the bid. And the world is always going to need raw material. It's going to need copper and gold and nickel and so forth. Totally destabilized. Hey, hey, troll, did you hear what's going on in Yemen? Are you too stupid? 